So in this video, we're going to cover the Swash Basic menu in the CGY750. The Swash Basic menu is essentially all your desktop or benchtop uh, setup work that you're going to do. And we're going to use the flight tuning menu to, as the name implies, do flight tuning at the field. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my radio and I'm going to get that booted up to the model we created in the previous video. And once that's all set, we're going to go ahead and plug in the 750 here. So we're going to get power to it. We can see the little helicopter boots up and you can hear my servos kicking over uh, for the initialization process. So the first menu you're going to see here is the main menu, which is flashing between aileron, elevator, and rudder. And what it's displaying here is your aileron gain, your elevator gain, and your rudder gain as well as whether each of these uh, independent gyros, if you will, is in uh, heading hold or AVCS mode or normal mode. So the A indicates AVCS. If we saw an N, that would indicate normal mode. So for instance, if I flip into idle up three, the elevator and aileron menus now display an N. And as you may recall from the first video, we set up idle up three so that aileron and elevator would be in normal mode in order to do a trim play. So for now, I'm going to go back to my normal mode in my radio, and we're going to move on to the Swash Basic menu. So to navigate through the CGY 750, you have four different buttons here. Uh, the right set, which as the data side, will allow us to get to the Swash Basic menu from the main screen. If I press the mode button now, we go through a couple other um, parameters the CGY has that uh, it monitors, but we'll go through those a little bit later. So for now, we're going to hit plus on the data side to get to the Swash Set Basic menu. And we're going to go into the first option here. So the first setting is the servo type. Um, I'm using a line BL815 servos on my model, and I happen to know that they work best at 285 hertz. So I'm going to set mine to 285 hertz. Uh, most of the Futaba brand servos will all work at 285 hertz as well. Uh, if you're running some of the other servos out there, or if you're running some really old analog servos, then you're going to want to make sure that you look up the appropriate driving frequency for your servos. So mine happens to be 285 hertz. So this next so. menu is our swash type. Since I am using a T-Rex 700 electric DFC model, uh, we're going to use the H3120 setting. Uh, most models out there are the 120 degree spacing. Uh, if yours is not, um, there's quite a few different options available under the swash type here. I'm not going to go through them all because it takes too long. Um, but there's quite a few different ones for virtually any type of swash plate out on the market, including the old mechanical style mixing, or if you're using a 140 degree spacing, and so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next menu, which is our heli size. So I am running a T-Rex 700 electric here, so I'm going to leave it on this setting, but there's also a 750 or more, as well as a 450 to 550 setting. And each of these affect uh, some of the default starting gain values in the flight tuning menu and a few other parameters in the CGY 750. So make sure that you pick the appropriate uh, setting for whichever model you're setting up. So we're going to use 600 to 700 in this case. Uh, the next setting here is our servo direction combination. So this is an interesting menu. This one requires you to have all three of your cyclic servos plugged in, as well as having the servos uh, set up onto your model so that you can see um, which direction the servo horns need to be in order for the servos. So the next menu we're gonna go through here is the servo direction menu. And the goal of this menu is to get all three cyclic servos working together. So a simple test to see if, they're, if all three servos are working together is to move the collective stick on your radio up and down with the servo horns attached to the servos. And to look to see if they are um, all moving together, either to drive the swash plate up or down. Uh, it isn't necessary at this point for them to necessarily be going the correct direction. So if all three are going together up, when you are giving uh, or moving the stick down on your radio, uh, that is not necessarily a wrong setting here. We can adjust that later on. We are simply looking for all three servos to be moving together. So on my model at the moment, 
two, one of the servos is not moving with the others. Uh, there, it's doing a different motion from the other two. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this setting to the next one. And I'm going to once again raise and lower the collective on my radio. And now two of the servos are moving together and the elevator servo is not. So I'm going to try combination number three. And when we get to this one, all three servos are now working together. Um, if you want to get really picky, you could keep scrolling through and find one where the servos are responding exactly how the stick is. So if I look at combination six right now, when I give positive collective, all three servos are moving up. And when I give negative collective, all three servos are moving down. Um, I could have left it at server direction combo number three, as the servos were all working together under that menu as well. However, number six will make it so I have to reverse less parameters um, later in the uh, Swash Basic setup. So I'm going to go with combination six for now. And we can move our on to our next menu here screen. is the aileron, elevator, and pitch neutral menus. So each of these allow you to set sub trim for each of your cyclic servos independently. Now, depending on your model, you may or may not have to use sub trim. For instance, on the T-Rex 700 Nitro model, uh, the included aligned servo horns have, I believe, eight different positions. So you can typically find um, a servo horn position that will be 90 degrees to the servo case without having to use any sub trim whatsoever. And a good practice when building any model is to shoot for zero sub trim. However, on some models, such as on the 700D DFC here, it is not possible to do this as the servo horns only have one position. So what I've done is I've fitted the servo horns to be as close to 90 degrees as possible with my collective at center stick. And after doing so, I found that I've needed a little bit of sub trim on each of my servos. So I'm going to go ahead and sub trim out uh, one of my servos here just to show you what it looks like and what so adjusting So I've set my radio to center stick per the servo monitoring menu. And now I'm ready to go ahead and adjust my servo sub trim. So I found a spot on the servo horns where the horn is as close to 90 as possible with the stick in this, uh, in this position. And now we're going to adjust the neutral point. So I'm going to go ahead and start dialing in some sub trim. And you just got to pick a direction and go. In this case, moving uh, negative is lowering the servo horn, which is the opposite direction of where I want it to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start going positive. And we can see the servo horn slowly moving until it gets to right about there. So with about plus 35 uh, microseconds of sub trim, my servo horn is now 90 degrees to the servo case. So you're going to repeat this under the elevator and aileron menu. So if I go back, you'd go through these two servos as well and do the exact same thing to get your uh, servo horns 90 degrees. Now, if you're getting some very, very high value, you might want to go ahead and recheck and make sure that you actually got the servo horn as close as 90 degrees as possible prior to <clears throat> mounting the horn onto the servo. Um, because sometimes um, there's two positions that are close and one of them might be slightly closer than the other. So something to check out as you So the next this. menu we're going to go through is the swash direction menus. Uh, to help with this menu a little bit, I've gone ahead and mounted my swash plate onto my main shaft and set up the three linkages connecting my servos to my swash plate so that the swash plate is level at center stick. Um, this just helps with this menu a little bit as you can actually look at the swash plate as a reference. So once you have that all set, we can move forward in this menu. So the first thing we're going to do is the aileron access. So you're going to want to take your radio and move the cyclic stick to either the left or the right. I'm going to move it to the left and we want to watch our swash plate. So in my case, my swash plate is tilted to the left, which is the correct direction for my model. So I don't have to reverse it. However, if it rotated to the right, then I would use the uh, plus or minus on the data side of the CGY here to reverse it. And since mine's correct, we're going to move on to the next one, which is elevator. And I'm going to do the same thing by moving the uh, elevator uh, stick backwards to see if the swash plate tilts backwards, which it does. So again, I do not have to make an adjustment here. Uh, the last one is the pitch uh, swash direction. 
So if I move my stick up, the swash plate on my model should go up to give positive pitch, which it does. So again, I do not have to reverse this menu. And when I go down, my swash plate goes down, which is negative pitch on my particular model. Uh, if you use some of the uh, Raptor models out there, or some of the other ones where it's backwards, then you just want to double check and make sure that uh, that's corresponding correctly, as yours may be the opposite of what I have here. But my model is set up correctly, so I can go ahead and move on to the next Before screen. Before we move on to the next screen, I'd actually like to take a second and show you one uh, thing you should do in the Swash Expert menu uh, prior to moving on. And this is to level the swash plate at both high and low stick. Uh, it's relatively easy to do, and we may as well, now that we have our swash plate mounted, uh, get it out of the way. So I'm actually going to press and hold the plus mode key. And after a few seconds, it will go to the swash set expert. And now I'm going to scroll through this to the first menu, which is pitched aileron mixing, and the second menu, which is pitched elevator. So we're going to use these two to level our swash at high and low stick. Now if I move my collective all the way down, uh, which it is right now, you can see that I have the letter A here. So this is one side of the parameter that we can adjust. So A will be our uh, low stick adjustment. And if I move the collective all the way to the top, you can see that's changed to B. So B will be our positive or high uh, stick swash leveling side. So I'm gonna flip back to the elevator, or the aileron menu, excuse me. And we're gonna take a look at our swash leveler that's on the helicopter. And right now, my swash looks actually pretty level. Looks like I don't actually have to adjust it, in this case, at high stick. Uh, however, if I did, we could either move this value up or down, and this would cause the swash plate to tilt either left or right. And you can use this in order to fix any unevenness in the swash plate and get it perfectly level. Similarly, if you notice the swash plate is tilted forward or aft, you can make an adjustment to the pitched elevator by increasing or decreasing this number in order to get the swash plate to tilt forward or back to level it out at high stick. Now if we go and move our stick to low, and once again position our swash plate and take another look. Once again on, on this particular model I don't need to do any adjustment and it's perfectly level at both high and low stick. Uh, however, some models I've had in the past, I have had to make adjustments here. So it is definitely worth checking out these two parameters to get your swash plate level at both high and low stick. So with that being said, we're going to return to the swash basic menu by holding the plus mode key. So at this point in the build, you're going to want to go ahead and install and fully assemble your rotor head and install your blades. And you're going to want to adjust your blade linkages so that you have zero degrees of pitch with your collective stick at center stick, or zero degrees pitch. And once you have that adjusted, we're going to use the swash rate parameter here in order to set the amount of static cyclic pitch the CGY has to uh, correct with during your flight. The manual states that you should aim to achieve a, between nine to 10 de degrees of cyclic pitch. Uh, some models benefit from having a little bit more. It doesn't hurt necessarily to have a little bit more than that, as this sets the overhead that the system has to work with. Uh, I usually try to shoot for at least 10, uh, usually try to get closer to 11 degrees if the geometry on my model allows for it. Uh, it's pretty important in this case also to ensure that your swash rate is somewhere between 50 and 65% ideally. Uh, I try not to go over 70% to achieve the 9 to 10 degrees pitch range. Um, as you get outside of this 70% range, if you go above that, you may want to look at moving the balls out on either your servo horns so that you get more throw from the servos, or using longer balls on your uh, inner swash plate. Uh, you can also space those balls out with uh, shims behind them, which we, I've seen some people do on their models in order to get a little bit more uh, cyclic pitch and get this swash rate number into that 50 to 70 percent range. So if you're over that, you might want to look at adding some throw into the mechanics of your helicopter. Um, if you're lower than, say, 50 percent, then you might want to move the balls in on your servo horns or use shorter balls on your inner swash ring. Uh, this will have the same effect. But the idea is to get between 9 and 10 degrees right in the 50 to 60, 65 percent range. So I'm going to go ahead on my model 
and I'm going to measure how much pitch I have right now at 50%. So the first thing to do is to make sure that your collective is at center stick on your radio. Once you have that, you want to line up the rotor head so that you have uh, the blades parallel to the boom, as I have done so here. And once you have that, we can go ahead and check the swash rate or the cyclic pitch by feeding in full left or full right aileron. So when I did it here, I got about seven and a half degrees of pitch either way, roughly. Um, so I want to increase this value. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to about 65. And we're going to see what that gets me. So if I go ahead and measure that again, now I'm getting about nine and a half degrees or so on either side of the measurement. So 65% should be good. That is the percentage I'm going to use on this model for now. Um, I may turn it up slightly more as I've got a little bit more room there to, to turn it up before I hit that 70% ceiling. So for now, I'm going to leave it at the 9.5 degree range and we're going to move on to the next menu. The next menu we're going to set up is our pitch rate menu. And this sets the overall collective pitch that the model has available. Uh, so you can set this to whatever desired amount of collective pitch that you would like. Uh, most beginners, I recommend around 10 degrees. Uh, for 3D, anywhere from 12 to 14 or 14 and a half degrees. Uh, I'm going to set up 14 degrees on my model. So in order to do this, we're going to put the pitch gauge back onto the blades. And we're going to move our collective stick to full positive and full negative and adjust this uh, value to get 14 degrees of pitch. So in my case, I had to adjust the pitch rate to about 57% in order to get 14 degrees of pitch. Uh, on my T-Rex 700E DFC here. So I'm going to use that setting. Again, this one you can, this one isn't so critical to get into the 50 or 60% range, but uh, in my case, I was able to get it in there. So you can adjust this to whichever collective range you prefer on your model. The next two menus here are very important to set correctly. We have our aileron gyro direction, as well as the elevator gyro direction on the next screen here. Uh, these two set the gyro compensation direction for your swash plate on the elevator and aileron axes respectfully. So it's very important to make sure that you have these set correctly. Uh, if you have them backwards, you will have a very short maiden flight of your helicopter as it will either roll or flip right into the ground. So you want to double check and make sure that you have these set correctly. So for the elevator axis here, if we pick up our model and we tilt the nose down, the swash plate should tilt to the back of the helicopter and uh, vice versa. So if I tilt the helicopter back, the swash plate should tilt forward. And that's for the elevator gyro direction. Similarly, if we look at the aileron gyro direction, if I tilt the helicopter and roll it to the right, the swash plate should tilt to the left. If I rotate the helicopter to the left, the, gyro, the swash plate should compensate by going to the right. So it's very important, once again, to make sure that you get these. The next parameter here is your swash ring. So this sets the electronic swash ring in the CGY 750 to prevent binding on the cyclic stick in the corners. So if I have my swash plate all the way down and I move the cyclic stick into all four corners and listen for binding, um, which I don't have on my model in particular, but if you did, you could reduce the swash ring uh, in order to prevent binding in the corners. And you want to check it at both low stick or uh, full negative collective as well as full positive collective and make sure that you don't have any binding in the corners. Uh, if you have a little bit of binding, it's probably not super critical as most of the time you're not going to be flying in the corners of the cyclic stick uh, in flight anyway. But if you have some severe binding, you can use this parameter. The next parameter here is to teach the CGY 750 your stick directions. So the first one here is the aileron uh, stick direction. So it's asking you to apply right aileron. So if I move the cyclic stick to the right, I should see that little exclamation point pop up. If it does not, then you want to hold right aileron and then press the plus data key here. And then you should see the exclamation point pop up. And this teaches the CGY 750 your stick position for right aileron. Similarly, on the next menu is elevator up. So contrary to what this might lead you to believe, when it says elevator up, it is referring to pulling up or pulling the elevator stick back towards you. 
So if I give back elevator, I should see the exclamation point, which in this case I do. So I don't have to set it. But once again, if I needed to, I would press the plus data key and the exclamation point should pop up. So that's the stick directions. If we move on to the next screen, we have pitch low. So I want to move my collective to full low, which in my case is uh, 1940 microseconds. And I, again, want to see that exclamation point. If I didn't see it, I would go over here and hit the plus data key, and then it should pop up. Uh, the next one is going to be pitch zero. So I'm going to move the stick to center stick, which will be around 1520 or so microseconds. And again, I want to see the exclamation point. And if you don't, you can hit the plus data key. And the last one is pitch high, which, like the other two, if you move the collective to the high position, you are looking for the exclamation point, which, again, I have. Uh, so these three menus are all set. You can go on to the next one. Rotational equalizer. This is your pyro compensation. Uh, I am going to turn this on, as I want pyro comp to be on. Uh, for some reason you didn't want it turned on, you could disable it. Uh, the next parameter here is our equalization direction. So this one I see a lot of people get backwards. Um, when you go enter this menu, your swash plate is going to tilt in one direction. And what you're looking for is if you pick the helicopter up and rotate the body of it about the main shaft axis, the swash plate should remain tilted in the same direction. Uh, if it does not, then you need to reverse this. In parameter. my case, the model did need to be reversed as the swash plate followed the main shaft. It didn't stay tilted in the same direction. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse this. And now when I test it, you can see that it is staying tilted in the same direction no matter where I rotate the body of the helicopter. And after that, that is the last setting in the swash basic menu. Now uh, there's one more parameter I'd like to go over in the swash expert. So if I once again hold the plus mode key and go to the swash set expert menu, uh, we're going to scroll through towards the end of the menu here. Um, and this one is called Phase Equalizer. Uh, this used to be in the Swash Basic menu, but it's gotten moved into the Swash Expert. Uh, pretty much the only time you need to turn this on is if you are running the internal CGY 750 Governor, and this can help with the Pyro compensation. Uh, not every model needs this necessarily on. Uh, you can try running it without it turned on, and if your Pyro Comp is working pretty well, then you can leave it off. Uh, sure. uh, however, on some You're models, right. pyro compensation isn't working as well as you uh, would like it to. You can try turning your phase equalizer on, and this will sometimes help correct the pyro compensation behavior. Um, other than that, that concludes the CGY 750's Swash Basic menu. Um, and then our next segment, we are going to go through the Rudder Basic menu, and I'm going to show you how to set that part up.